sound off for Chesterfield. Chesterfield, the first cigarette in America to give you premium quality in both regular and king size, brings you drag men. Yes, I got an office. Go like this. Oh, 
You already got it open? Yes, sir, we did. A little bitty screwdriver probably wouldn't have worked anyway. Oh, thank you anyway, sir. Sure thing. Anything else I can do for you? No, sir, it's all right. Not, nothing you need, nothing at all? Well, not unless you've got a good remedy for office. 11.01 p.m., the ambulance arrived and took the victim to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. Frank and I followed in our car. This was the tenth in a series of kidnappings in which the suspects obtained cars to use in armed robberies. After beating the victims, they'd locked them in the trunk of the car, and after completion of the robberies, they'd abandoned the automobile with the victims tied and gagged in the trunk. Although to date none of the victims had been killed, we knew it was only a matter of time until the suspects kidnapped somebody who would be incapable of standing the treatment, and we'd not only have a robbery, but a murder to deal with. The holdups had been going on for a period of six weeks. Frank and I followed up what leads we could, but they brought us nothing. None of the victims could describe the suspects other than to tell us they were male, white Americans, and that one of them spoke with a southern drawl. 11.17 p.m., we arrived at the hospital. The victim had been placed in treatment room number three. Dr. George Hall was treating him. Frank and I went into the room to talk to the doctor. Hi, Joe. Frank. Hi, Danny. How is he? Oh, he's all right. Suffering from shock. He's got a nasty abrasion on his right cheek. I gave him a sedative to quiet him down. He'll be okay in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. What happened to him? I have a trunk bandage again. Vicious bunch. You going to release him, Doc? Yeah, I'll be all right in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, you know his name? I want to make out his treatment card. No, he passed out on us before we could get him. Uh, uh, he's coming around now. Put a big piece of adhesive tape over the 
a mouth. No, sir. I tried with the guy, no. I just couldn't do it. You said if you heard one of them say, this is a stick-up. Yeah. Those were the words you used to. This is a stick-up. Uh, why don't you go ahead, sir? Well, there was some quiet talking after that. I couldn't tell what was going on, and they drove away again. You have no idea where this gas station was? Uh-oh. I'm sorry, but I was being bounced around that trunk. My head hurt where they hit me. I know they turned some corners, but I couldn't even guess where the station might be. That's just what happened then. Same thing. They drive for a while and they'd stop. They'd get out of the car, then come back, we'd start to drive again. So finally they parked, I waited for them to come back. They didn't. I tried to get the gag off my mouth like he yelled for help. Rubbed my face against the spare tire and got loose. Then I yelled, kicked my feet against the trunk. I just about giving up when you found me. I'm sure I was through. It was getting hard to breathe in there. Uh huh. I can imagine. No, you can't. Until you've been locked in the trunk. Nobody can imagine that. Terrible. Just terrible. Say, have you called me? That's my wife. Have you called her? No, she really haven't. Oh, she'll be hopping mad. What time is it? It's 11.45. Almost four hours to get a pile of coffee. She'll be raising the roof. Would you call her? Tell her where I am? Yes, yeah, sir. I'll call her. Want to give me the number? Uh, Madison 34656. Uh huh. Tell her you're calling for Henry. Explain what happened. All right, sir, right away. Oh. Officer. Yeah? Be sure to tell her you're a policeman. She'll believe you. Yes, sir. I have a couple of questions, sir. I have to fill out this card. Yeah, sure. I hate to ask. Could I have another couple of ones? I'll get it. What do you want to know? I uh, your full name. Henry J. Hildale. H-I-L-L-D-A-L-E. Uh-huh, I am. Somebody in town knows them. They're not phantoms. We're climbing. 
guys aren't the brainiest ones in the world. If they were, they wouldn't be getting the cars the way they do. Well, yeah, that figures. How about the car? Find anything? I called late and Prince. They said the car was dry enough to work on. I couldn't tell if anything was. Said they called back. Mm -hmm. I've been going over their crime reports. Maybe got an idea. Yeah. The way it looks, they picked up the cars in one area, pulled the jobs in the same area. Could be that they live in that area. Makes sense. They've been working inside a 30 square block. Freaked down a hill, 7th to Pico. You got a description on them? Talk to the desk clerks at every hotel and boarding house in the area. Robbery, did you? Yeah, he's here. See you, Jim. Thanks, Kevin. This side. Oh, yeah, dude. Hmm? You bet. That's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Bergman? Yeah, I just finished the car. It's clean. Not a thing on it.
He was filed on in San Francisco for grand theft auto and kidnapping. Sunday, February 22nd, we arrived back in Los Angeles, took our witnesses to their homes and checked into the office. We called Captain Gideon and found that there had been no new developments in the case. Frank and I went home to get some sleep. Monday morning, 7.45 a.m., we signed into the office. We picked up the flyers and started to canvas the area where we thought the holdup men were living. During the first day, we were able to check out 28 places. Tuesday the 24th, it started to rain again. At 8.30 a.m., we started to canvas the rest of the hotels, rooming houses, and boarding houses in the area. For three days, we talked to the day and the night clerk in each place. We left each of them a flyer with the description of the men and our cars, asking them to call us if anyone answering the description should register at their particular place. For three days, it rained. Saturday, February 28th. Think it'll ever stop, Joe? And it sure is wet. Yeah. Looks like the guys we want to drop off the face of the earth, nobody's seen or heard of them. I never realized there were so many hotels in L.A. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Well, let's try this one. All right. Yeah, something you want? We're police officers, sir. Here's our ID. What's that? Police officers. Oh, oh, police. That's right, sir. Yeah. Well, what do you want? We'd like to know if you've got anyone here who answers these descriptions. Like this, huh? Yes, sir. Well, it's kind of hard to say. If you had a picture of them, it might help. I'm sorry, sir. We don't have a picture. Just that description. Sure, it could be the fellas with four eights. They sure fit what it says here. Yeah, I bet it's them. I knew we should have called you fellas about. Sir? See, it's day before yesterday. And she's a girl, you know, teams up with... Taking care of the room. She said that she opened the closet and she saw a gun laying on the shelf. You know, right, right out in the open. Did you report that to the police? Huh? What did you say? Did you report it to the police? Oh, no. No, no, I didn't. You see, I figured that, you know, real and less real. As long as it didn't cause me any trouble, I wasn't about to cause any. And even we talked about whether we should let you know, but then uh, we decided against it. I didn't see none. We should have. What did you get tell us when you saw them last, sir? Oh, well, a couple of hours ago. They registered here? Yeah, and it's Scott and Ed Willis. They're up in room 4 Hey, Ain't there now, though, let's see. She doesn't Well, I'll be darned if she ain't there. Well, I guess we are upset. Sir, I must have given the key and didn't remember. That's room 4 she said? What did she say? I said that's room 4 Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. 4 4 4 They're up there now. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh... What are you worried for? Are they dangerous criminals? Well, we don't know, sir. Well, be careful. You know, we wouldn't want anything to happen. Yes, sir. Here, I'll get the button. All right. What do you figure, Joe? I don't know. Hope there are our boys. Come help me, then.
First-degree robbery is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for from five years to life for each count. In the case of Scott and Winters, these sentences are to run consecutively.